This example will create an animation of this piston using Animation Designer. The process with any animation is generally three steps. Step number one, using the rigid group command, you tell the system what can move. Step two, using joints, you tell the system how those rigid groups can move. Step three is you add a motor to apply motion. As you can imagine, we want the piston to go up and down and the crankshaft to spin around, uh, but we don't have any of these um, entities created yet. We do have a solution, but there's nothing in there. Uh, I am going to take the easy way out and let Animation Designer create all of these uh, nodes and things for me. So you don't have to create a new solution. We'll just create all these uh, subcategories for you as you create rigid groups, joints, and things. So we'll start with uh, step number one, rigid group. And what I want is I want the crankshaft to spin around, so I'm going to make it its own rigid group. So I'll just pick it, hit the apply button, and it uh, accepts the input and uh, prepares me for the next rigid group definition step. Also notice how the um, shaft went a little bit uh, grayed out on me, so letting me know that the thing has already been part of a rigid group. Next, of course, the connecting rod, and there's two components here. And I could pick the wrist pin if I want, and I just might go ahead and do that. I'll let the system drill through to get the wrist pin. Next rigid group will be the piston itself, so I will drill through it to get the piston body. And last but not least, I want the cylinder and the small uh, guide bearing to be uh, the last rigid group and they don't have to be connected in any form or fashion as you can see. Also, um, I'm letting the system apply the color for me automatically, so uh, there is a color mode that you'll soon see that shows all the ridge groups in a unique color. Also, there's a setting up here for create single ridge group or create ridge group per object. I could have draw a rectangle around everything and hit the uh, single uh, or the group per object and it would have created a rigid group out of every single entity for me. I would use that command sparingly because we will pick up reference plane sketches, all kinds of, of uh, reference geometry as well. So if you pick multiple things, you can select them individually and then hit that if you want to create an individual rigid group of each one. We may see an example of that a little later on. All right, now that that's done, the best way to see your rigid groups, uh, of course, you can expand your, uh, your navigator and see them. Or you could just hit the rigid group by color, and it shows how everything is in some unique color for each of the, uh, the rigid groups. At this point, uh, step number one, I, I would consider done. And uh, we'll move on to the next step, uh, the uh, joint uh, definition. Now, if something was not in a rigid group, it would show sort of in a, uh, a grayed color or a whitish color. All right, so first thing, the joints, uh, my personal favorite is I like to lock everything down first. And also, notice how I have the rigid group color still on. Just makes things easier for picking so you know exactly what you're rotating this about that or so on and so forth. I'm going to lock down the cylinder and I am going to have the piston slide up and down. So we'll use a slider joint for that. And at this point, it doesn't really matter what joints and joint order uh, you pick. Um, Everything is all solved independently or, or together, I should say. So we'll pick this uh, rigid group. And uh, the second object, I want it to go up and down about that cylinder along this uh, vector here. So I can pick the cylinder as well. It doesn't really matter as long as you get the vector in the right um, direction, which would be normal to the top of that cylinder. That's probably good enough. Let's hit apply and move on to our next joint, which maybe I'll put a um, rotating joint or a revolute joint about the wrist pin and the piston itself. So I'm going to rotate this around so I can see the inside a little bit easier. And we're going to put a joint between this cylinder or the, uh, the piston, then the wrist pin, and along the axis of that wrist pin. And if I zoom out, you, could, you should see the uh, axis of revolution there. Now, where it is, uh, the point doesn't matter for something like a revolute joint, or at least in this case, it doesn't. A couple more uh, joints. Let's put a uh, rev revolute between the uh, connecting rod and the crankshaft. And of course, I'm going to use the uh, cylinder of the crankshaft to ro uh, rotate about. And we'll hit apply. And I think I just have one more to do when we're done with our joint definition process. Last thing, it's got to rotate around this uh, sort of sleeve part here. And uh, again, the inputs were 
the sleeve, the crankshaft, the cylinder of that crankshaft, and I don't really care where the point is for that. You don't need to worry about it. All right, now that that's done, you can see your joints if you want to. Uh, just expand the navigator and you can click them and see all of these joints, or as you would imagine, you could right-click on the joint folder and uh, see all of the joints. This is my personal favorite here to turn these on when you want to apply some motors. That way you can see exactly where all of your uh, joints are. That concludes step number two. Step number three, let's just add a speed motor to our piston. So as you'd imagine, we'll just click the speed motor, click the joint itself, and I'm going to use the one between the uh, uh, crankshaft and the sleeve, and we'll give it a speed of, I don't know, a couple of hundred degrees per second. Hit the OK button and play, and there we go. Just like that, we're animating an assembly. Granted, this is a simple assembly, but the process was very, very simple to, um, to apply. Step number one, to find what can move. Step number two, how does it move. Step number three is the speed.